The story that I'm about to tell you is terrifying, maybe even dangerous, but most importantly, it's hilarious as heck. <laughs> Hello potatoes, it's Kim Potato and welcome back to another video. So today I am doing a story time. July typically for us band kids is marching band, band camp season. So I thought for all of my band camp folks out there who were working their butts off in the hot sun, trying to stay six feet apart while wearing a mask, holding those heavy instruments, like this one's for you. I applaud you, you're doing great and I hope you can keep up the good work. One of the reasons why I'm also making this video is that I am gonna be a senior, kind of, sort of, who knows with the whole school thing going on. But for seniors, rising seniors, we typically do something called senior night. That's when the seniors will gather around in a circle and then have the underclassmen kind of like sit at their feet, almost like if there's a fireplace that's going off, we all like gather around like our grandmothers in her rocking chair and just kind of like hear her talk about her good old days and like I've never had a grandmother like that, but that's what it seems like it's shown in movies and stuff, so think of it like that, but with seniors and underclassmen. My seniors tell some very interesting stories. Some wacky things have happened in my three years in marching band, so I thought I'd tell you one of the stories today and hopefully this never happens to you. It was terrifying. It was scary as heck, but hopefully you can learn from my mistake. Maybe I'll even sprinkle them some advice because I was supposed to be advice with avocado, but I've never given like actual tangible advice on here. So I guess this is my chance. So here's the story. Uh, I was in marching band for seventh grade, ninth grade, and 10th grade. I was at a different school in, um, for the seventh grade one, and they did it from seventh to 12th grade. But at this new school, Auburn High School, uh, they did it from ninth grade to 12th grade. And for my sophomore year specifically, it was my last year in marching band. Didn't know it was my last year in marching band, but you know. Uh, during my sophomore year, it was the second game of the season and it was with our rival team. For that specific game of the year, we usually have a lot of police patrolling the area at the football game just to make sure that everything doesn't get too rowdy um, as it had done in the past. Everyone's usually really riled up at this game and that included me. I was super riled up too, especially there was at least one point where the other team made a touchdown, I believe, and like came to the band section and like taunted us and I was like, mm -mm, no, 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 sir, no, ma'am. No, whatever. And so I think I played saxophone that year. I played a bunch of different instruments, but I believe I played alto that year. And I was like screaming, I was yelling, saying words that I didn't even know I was capable of, you know, saying words in different languages. That's how you get away with it. Um, and just like, just putting everything out there. And I feel like I was drinking water, but I must not have been drinking enough water because of what's gonna happen. We're about to go on to perform our halftime show. We get onto the field and we can kind of tell that the weather is a little bit off, but I mean, we've gone through every single type of weather. I feel like, especially a marching band, we have been in the scorching hot sun during the summer. We have gone through pouring rain. I mean, we've gone through a lot of different types of weather. And so when we noticed that the sky wasn't too good like we weren't thinking like oh this might cancel our show or cancel um the football game like we were just like oh it's just a friday <laughs> so we set up on the field we do i believe up until the first or second movement i can't exactly remember when lightning strikes it's like off in the distance it made this really cool picture but that was uh, obviously a safety hazard so everyone had to evacuate and the drum major told us to book it off the field i actually don't know if we were still allowed to book it off the field that game. I remember that year a guy ran and fell and broke his collarbone. So we aren't allowed to run anymore. We have to jog or lightly run. So that's marching band for you. But I specifically remember for me, um, I was getting off the field and I felt like a ball that you throw and then it like loses momentum because of friction and gravity. And I just kind of like, <sighs> Just like fell face down. Um, it just felt like my head and my body were disconnected in a way where I just couldn't feel like my legs and I just couldn't move. <laughs> it's just kind of laying on the sideline, not being able to feel my legs. Um, and because of the lightning, everyone had to evacuate, right? So all of the marching band members and color guard and majorettes and everyone went to the nearby church <laughs> And so no one was there. 
no none of my friends no no one like i mean obviously only like two band moms i believe were there and when they noticed that there was a kid on the sideline like not standing up or walking obviously the paramedics and the police are coming over um and i believe my assistant principal was on his way too and here's the thing guys think about it like this i couldn't feel the lower half of my body i am terrified of police uh that's just like a personal thing no one i would be comfortable with or there they've all evacuated to the nearby church so i'm like great um and four i know that my assistant principal is coming and he's probably on the phone with my parents and i know that if my parents find out they're not gonna be too happy um so all of those things just kind of like have me like shut down mentally so i don't really know like the specifics of what happened that night so i can only really generally tell this but so basically they're like okay you can't stand, you can't walk, so you need to go home. You aren't gonna, I mean, we, we were gonna be done with the show anyways, we were gonna continue the show, I believe, but it just wouldn't make sense for me to continue being in the stands, even after they say it's okay to get back onto the field. Um, so they were like, okay, we need to get you to the ambulance, which is on the other side of the field. And you know, my dad can meet me there and he can decide whether I need to go to the hospital or not. I didn't end up having to go to the hospital, it wasn't that bad, but, let, let's say this is the field and this is the band area and this is where the ambulance is um the end the we are like over here we're like over here the exit point at the field is over here so it means we have to go diagonal for some reason they were like yeah we're just gonna walk you across the field no one's on it like everyone is evacuated i think the football players have even gone back into the little shelter and so they were like yeah let's just walk you across the field and not like around the sidelines and they're like, okay, we're going to need a stretcher because you can't walk and no one's going to carry you. And which is, I was like, thank you, I don't need that. Um, but they couldn't find stretchers because for some reason, I'm, I'm sure there were like fights that ended up like having some people pretty injured. And I think they were using the stretchers. So they were like, okay, here's the plan. We're going to get the chair. We're going to sit you down on the chair. And I, I kid you not, four huge like burly police officers paramedics i couldn't i couldn't remember who um but four of them were in cardinal directions of me hoisted me up and walked me across the field <sighs> i've never been levitated i have tripped on a pothole and flown but i have never levitated like that and let me tell you it's fun in theory but when you're up there you're like Please do not drop me. So they are walking me across and I have never had that many eyes on me. I have played at concerts. I have been in honor bands. I have had eyes like on the general band I'm in. I've done like solo performances, but like it wasn't that many people either. I had an entire high school football stadium of amount of people looking at me. <sighs> I look over to the, like the visitor side, the opponent team. And I just remember wanting to stick up the middle finger really badly. I believe they were winning at the time, so I was just like, mm. so I I believe mentally just like flicked them off, just gave them the bird, but obviously didn't do it in real life because I knew that there were a lot of important people at school watching and that was gonna compromise a lot of different things that I didn't want to risk at the time. So got to the end of the field, went back home with my dad and it took like a couple hours to like get everything hardwired back. To I sound like a robot, but like it took a couple hours for everything to link back up again. Uh, went to the doctor a couple days later. They told me I have patella tendonitis, which basically at the time, uh, my kneecap was unstable. It wasn't like being secure. And so it was grating against the other bones here and it just made everything really unstable. I wasn't able to stand on my feet correctly. And obviously if I was riled up like that, probably not being hydrated enough um, and trying to march a show and then just like in a sudden state of panic after run off the field, like it obviously was going to result in me like dissociating half of my body and just like falling face flat. But good news is we won that night. Um, after they had like, I believe 30 minutes um, of like a timeout, they came back and then they were still losing up until like the last couple of minutes and then woohoo our team scored and yay we won so yeah i guess some advice that i have is one don't 
have that happen to you ever. It might be funny to think about, but it was terrifying genuinely to not feel like a part of your body not having control and you know, it's just kind of terrifying to have that happen um, in front of a lot of people. Two, hydrate. <laughs> I feel like one of the biggest things during that night was that I could have just had more water. I could have just, just hydrated. Like hydration is key, hydrate or dehydrate. Like that is all true. So make sure that even for those who are in band camp right now, make sure to drink lots of water, even to the point where you feel like you're having too much water because I guarantee you having too much water is a lot better than having too little water. Um, and I had learned that the hard way through this event as well as many other events. Um, so yeah, please make sure to do that. Um, third thing is to cherish all the memories that you have. Um, obviously this is a very great memory, um, but there were also some not so great memories. Like, you know, I got disqualified from Allstate one year. There was a competition, we had to like freeze our toes off because it was so cold. It was raining and I was just, ugh. Even those memories, I think back fondly because it was a moment with my band family. It was a moment where I had become part of a community, part of an organization. I was just so proud to be a part of that. And you know, whatever memory I have now, I'm super grateful for, especially since I'm not in it right now. And even those moments, I feel like I took for granted. Um, so, you know, cherish all those memories, like go sign up for 13 events in solo and ensemble. That's what I did. The worst thing someone can say is no. And my band director said no, but that's okay. I did the amount of events that um, were capped, which were four. Um, and I still had a blast that year. I still had a blast all the years that I so solo in the ensemble. Freaking eat the sandwich at the Allstate Honor Band and drink that like weird coffee concoction that your bandmates make you. It may make you throw up, but those are the memories that are worth it. Wear your medals, get a sash, pin everything, become a human chandelier. It's super fun, again, that that does make you like a center of attention in some aspects, but like usually at honor bands there are a lot of other people who are wearing medals, so it's okay. Uh, but really, it's a lot of fun to just kind of like jingle as you walk. So yeah, again, these things don't last for forever. Um, obviously, I learned that whenever it got cut short for me, and a lot of seniors this year, um, in a way, it's cut short for them, and just in general for seniors, you know, there comes a point where things have to end. And honestly, the best advice that we can all give is that you really need to cherish the moments that you still have with all the people around you. And especially with something like band, it's not just an extracurricular activity. It's not just a class or an organization or a group. It's a family, it truly is. It's like a second family, it's a home away from home. You know, I probably have spent so much time in the band room and on the field and, you know, on buses to and from games and honor bands and all of these different trips that we've been on like those are truly the things that make it worthwhile with all your friends and essentially your family so really hope you take your band memories um and just hold them close to your heart so yeah if you liked it please make sure you give it a thumbs up and comment down below what part of the story was your favorite hopefully the part about me being hoisted up by four men <laughs> Please subscribe down to my channel for more interesting content like this and hope you have a great day. Wishing you the best as always, Gato, rolling on out.